Hey YouTube, how are you doing today? This is my review of Quicken 2017, which came out about a month ago now. This is my impression of it so far after using it for about a month. I really like the new layout. Much improved, modernized, it looks nice and clean. Very good user interface now. I love that you can link your home with Zillow. Zillow provides property values and Quicken will link with it now so you know exactly what your home's value is right now. So that's a great new feature. Another nice one is it has a feature to sanitize your data file which will get rid of any personalized information in there so you can send it into Quicken Technical Support and they can help you fix any problems that you might be having. Some of the screens and tabs are improved and have a better layout. For instance, the home screen looks great now. It shows you your spending, your income, your expenses, your budget, your bills, all on one nice screen all in one place. The property screen shows you all of your assets and their current value and if you have loans or mortgages set up against those assets it will show you what those are as well all on one nice neat tab. As far as the bugs and crashes that Quicken has always had, sorry to say that it still crashes sometimes. I've had it crash three or four times in the last month. I have never lost any data from that but it still does crash sometimes and that's something that Quicken has always done and I hope they someday fix that. I still think Quicken is the best way to keep track of your finances. I use it to keep track of all my accounts. I spend about two to three hours a month and I'm able to balance all my checking account, pay my bills, keep track of all my investments and spending, track my business expenses, my business income, and all of that in two to three hours a month. So Quicken does a great job of letting me do all of that from one place. I've never found a better tool for that and I still think Quicken is the best. So now we'll go over Quicken and I'll actually show it to you and show you a demo account of how I have it set up with some different demo credit card accounts, checking accounts, investment accounts, asset accounts, and so on. So here we go, let's dive in. Okay, so as you can see, I have Quicken open here, and this is that home screen I was talking about. It's a little bit nicer layout than it was in the older versions. Shows you all your spending right here for the last month, your income year to date, your income versus expenses. If you have a business set up, it will show you your business income and expenses right here. And then it shows your budget right here, how much you've spent so far this month and how much is remaining. Right down here is nice. It shows you your current net worth and a nice graph of right now I have it showing the last three years. So you can see your net worth over time here, how it's been going up. That's this dotted line here. So that's the home tab. You can see I've set up and just to make a note, these are all fake accounts that I've set up just for a demonstration. So I've set up a couple of checking accounts, a cash account to keep track of cash on hand. I've got a couple of savings accounts, a couple of credit card accounts, some business accounts. You can keep track of invoices, sales tax, and so on. I've got some business checking and credit card accounts, retirement accounts over here, and some property assets as well as the loans on those and then some savings goals. Right here, just from the home screen, you can see all of your accounts in one spot, how much is in each account, and your current total net worth right there at the bottom. So let's go through a few of these. Let's click on the checking account, and you can get an idea of what the register looks like. So it just shows some of the transactions over the last month in here that I've added to that. And if you link this with a bank, which most people do, it will automatically download these transactions for you. And you can either have it enter them automatically into the register and categorize them automatically, or it will put them down here at the bottom and you can go through them one by one and categorize them yourself. Now let's look at the spending tab here. This shows right now for the last 30 days what the spending has been like um, overall. And one nice thing about this is you can show spending without tax categories. That means any categories that are not related to your taxes, such as business expenses and things. So it's excluding those right now. Or it can show your overall spending here. So that's what the overall spending for the last 30 days is showing. It shows you which categories that spending was in and how much that was. And you can always change these to show this month, last month, the last 90 days, whatever you want. Another nice thing, you can show your income. And right now it's showing the last 30 days. So you can get an idea of where your income is coming from. 
and I've got a couple of business accounts in here, a couple businesses, a painting business, an Avon business, and a cleaning business, and a couple rental properties. So that's showing those in here and the income that, that I put in there for the last month. The bills tab, this is something new from 2016 and is still in 2017, is you can link your bills online with the biller. So let's say you have a power bill you can click get started here you can choose your power bill company and link your bill with them and then quicken will automatically go out and reach out to the power company and find out what your bill is for that month and when it's due so that's a really neat feature if you set that up so you can always stay on top of your bills you can set up reminders here for when your bills are due and right now i've got a few set up here just for the demonstration it shows when they're due, um, so you can see everything that's coming up. And you can change that to, to show due within the next week, due within the next month, or whatever you choose. And then this is another nice thing here, the projected balances. This will show you how much money Quicken expects you to have in your accounts based on the bills that you've set up. So it'll show you based on what you have set up as far as bills, how much money is going to be spent over the next 12 months. And you can change this uh, account tab here to choose different accounts that you want to look at, or you can look at everything. So that's a nice feature too. And of course you can always change the time intervals as well. So based on the bills here, over the next seven days it's showing me what my projected balance will be in seven days now let's go to the planning tab here so this is where you can find your budget and you can create budgets so if you want to live based on a budget it's a good way to keep track of how well you're doing there and quicken will let you know how much you have left to spend in each category that you've set up for that month and a nice feature they added a couple years ago that's still here over in this column it will show you how much you have left for the whole year based on your current spending. So that's great for times when maybe you go over by $50 one month in groceries and the next month you go under $100. Well, for that two months, that means you're $50 under budget and it will show that over here. So that's a nice feature. The debt reduction tab is a nice one. And if you set this up, it will take all of your loans and mortgages any loans that you have or debt that you have, credit card payments, and it will let you come up with a plan to pay those off. You can put plug in different numbers, and we'll, let's set this up here. So I've got two loans and a mortgage. So let's include those in the debt plan. This is how much the interest rates are on those. This is the monthly minimum payments, and you can tweak those if needed. And then this will show you when you can be debt free based on however much you want to pay each month and you can adjust that so let's say you want to pay a little bit extra each month look at that it'll adjust your debt level here so that you can figure out when you're going to be out of debt so that's a neat tool also the lifetime planner is nice for long-term planning i haven't set up very much in here but for long-term planning, you can put in when you plan to retire, how much your salary is, when you plan on getting raises, <clears throat> when you plan on maybe the kids moving out or the kids starting college, things like that, the big life events. You can plug that in here and it will give you a nice outlook over the next 50 years, 60 years, however long you need it to, on how your money situation will look based on the assumptions that you plug in there. The tax center shows you how the taxes look this year. This is basically what your tax return will look like that you'll be filing for the year. And all of your tax related expenses, uh, everything's in there. And you can adjust some of those values so you can figure out how your taxes are gonna go when you file your return. And then you can set up savings goals, which is just a nice way of helping you save for big things like maybe college or a car or something like that, or an emergency fund. Now the investing tab here, you may have noticed up here, I'm using the home and business version. So this investing tab is only available for Premier, Home and Business, and Rental Property Manager. I don't believe it's in the deluxe version. This tab will only show up if you have actually added investment accounts over here. 
So I set up a couple of 401k accounts and a couple of Roth IRA accounts. And so now that investing tab showed up. And it will show you each account here and all of the stocks or mutual funds or whatever assets are in those accounts. It will show you right here their current value and other information about them, including the returns that you've had for the last three years, one year, five year, whatever you want. You can customize all of this. This is just the default layout right now. And then the portfolio x-ray is a neat feature they added on with Morningstar a few years ago. It shows you tips and hints on your investment accounts, helps you figure out how you can better allocate things, and just gives you uh, rough pointers to help you out with your investing. Uh, the performance tab shows you how well your accounts have done over the last however many years you want to put in there. So for this imaginary person that I've set up, their accounts over the last year, you see I have it 12 months here, have outperformed the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the Dow. Of course, that's because it's a fake account here that I've set up. So, And it will also show you Maybe you think you've been doing well, but this will show you what your cost basis is right up here versus your portfolio value. So maybe this person hasn't done so well because their cost basis is higher than their current portfolio value, so they've lost money. So that's a nice thing if you're an investor or you have retirement accounts. And then this tab allocation shows you how all of your investments overall are allocated and then you can change the target here and it will help you figure out how much how you need to move things around to hit your target allocations so that you aren't invested too much in foreign stocks for example or large caps or cash or bonds or whatever the case may be and then this tax optimizer, this is a new one. I think it came out last year, but if you click that getting started button, it will help you figure out how to get a better tax return. What you can do with your investments, with your retirement accounts to minimize your taxes. And then there's the property and debt tab here. And this tab only shows up if you have entered property and debt over here. So I've entered a boat, a truck, and a house, along with the loans for those, the boat loan, the truck loan, and the house mortgage. So this shows you your net worth over the last whatever interval you choose. This is kind of nice because it shows you what your net worth is made up of. So you can see how much of it is in retirement accounts, how much is in your assets, your property, how much is in cash, how much is in your savings accounts, and so on. And then this net worth here shows you your current liabilities, all of your loans is down here at the bottom in red. Your current assets are up here in green. And then this dotted line is your current net worth. So you can see how that's been changing over time. And then the property tab here shows you all of the property that you have set up here, how much it's currently valued at, and how much you owe on it. So that's nice to see. And then you know exactly what your current balance is and that gives you your net worth or your the net value of that account. So you can see, for example, this person's house is currently worth 230,000. Their mortgage is 202,000. So right now they have about 27,000 in equity in that home. The debt tab here, it's just another way of looking at it, but it shows you all of your debt for the last whatever time interval you would like and how that debt is tied up. This shows that the biggest chunk of debt here for this person is in the mortgage, which is probably the case for most people. Um, it's just nice to be able to see where you are financially, and Quicken helps you do that. You can see exactly uh, what your financial picture looks like. The last tab here, this business tab, this only shows up if you have the home and business version or the rental property manager and it will only show up after you enter business accounts. So I've set up a couple of businesses in here to show how this works. And this business tab gives you a quick snapshot of the last month or whichever month you choose. It shows you that any cash that came in, any expenses or cash that went out, and then the overall profit and loss for the month along with how you did compared to the previous month. It will show you any bills down here if you set those up. It shows you how your expenses looked, uh, your income versus expenses, 
for the last several months. Um, these are just nice ways of looking at your financial situation so you can get a better grasp of how things are working. The cash flow tab here shows you the money coming in and out and then an account overview shows you all of the different business accounts that you have set up and a little bit of information about each of those. Now don't forget about these drop down menus here. This is how you can set up invoices, you can track miles, you can get guidance on a small business, um, different tips and pointers and help with using Quicken for a small business. You can keep track of projects and jobs. So there's a lot of tools here kind of hidden away on these menus for businesses. You can look at your different accounts. You're, you can keep track of customers, keep track of your invoices. Like I said, there's all these tools here to help you do that. You can set up your vendors. Um, you can set up different vendor accounts if you want to, invoice accounts, whatever you want. And then there's a lot of good reports for business owners, like the profit and loss statement. It will even generate your Schedule C for uh, when you do your tax return. And then there's some other tabs here. I'm not on the internet right now, but normally this shows different add-ons you can purchase with Quicken, like the bill pay, where it will automatically pay your bills for you. And then this tab lets you synchronize Quicken with your phone or mobile device, tablet, whatever. Android, Apple, uh, either way, it'll work on those. And so that mobile app will let you see your current balance of all your accounts. It will let you see the transactions. It will show you uh, your investments now. That's new for this year. You can actually see your investments and you can add transactions when you're on the fly, on the go. You can take pictures of receipts as you're out and about. So, and it will sync up with your desktop version of Quicken. So that's nice. Um, so you always have that with you on your phone. Let's go to this other tab. I'm offline, so this isn't showing up, but that gives you uh, tutorials on how to use Quick and how to set it up. So that's a quick overview. So far, I like this new version of 2017. It looks nice and clean, a cleaner look, more modernized look than it has previously. It seems to have improved the categorization over the previous years, um, the auto entry. It's got some nice additions like the mobile app is better and lets you track your investments. Um, another nice one is with Zillow. Um, oh, I forgot to show you that. So if you click on your house over here, I've already set this up, but you just click the getting started button here and plug in your address and it will synchronize with Zillow. So I put a fake address here, but if you put your real address, it will synchronize with Zillow and keep your home's value, your current net worth of your or market value of your home updated so that you know what your home is worth all the time. So that's an, a great addition that just came out this year. Another nice thing that Quicken does now is keep track of your credit score. And I'm offline, so it won't show it here, but normally it would show you your credit score right down here. And it gives you, uh, it keeps track of your credit report and will notify you of any changes that happen to your credit report. So you can always be sure that you aren't being a victim of identity theft, or if you are, you'll be able to catch it very quickly because Quicken will alert you if that happens. I won't go over the menus up here, but that's just more reports and tools that you can use. So that is an overview of Quicken. And like I said at the beginning, uh, it's a great tool it's one of the best ways that I've found to keep track of finances. It works well. It does still have a few bugs. It crashes once in a while, but it's a very uh, complicated product and it's been around for a long time. I'm excited about the new company, HIG Capital, which purchased Quicken earlier this year and the investments that they're making in improving it and trying to make it better. One other thing for Mac users now, Mac for Quicken, or Quicken for Mac, excuse me, is on par with Quicken Premiere now for Windows. They've made vast improvements to the Mac version. You can track everything in this, so it's a great tool, has its bugs, but tell me anything that's better. I don't think there is for your personal finances. So that is Quicken. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll try to answer them. I hope you enjoyed watching this. See you on YouTube.